Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to be looking at the basics of JavaScript. JavaScript is a client-side scripting language that is executed within the user's browser whenever a web page loads. Now, in the last video, we looked at how to install Node.js and VS Code, so make sure to watch that video so you have the same setup that I'm using in this video. I'm going to be leaving a link to the video in the description down below. Now, let's jump right in and look at the very first thing, which is how do we add comments? So there are two ways of adding comments to a JavaScript file. One way is to add two forward slashes and the code that comes after the two forward slashes is not executed. So this is a comment over here. The second way of adding a comment to a JavaScript file is by adding a multiple line comment, which you can add by uh, putting in a forward slash and a star and it ends with a star and a forward slash. The code that comes in between these two um, signs over here uh, does not get ex executed. So this is a multi-line comment. Um, as you can see, I can add multiple lines. They're all highlighted in green, which means that there are comments. So now that we know how to comment in JavaScript, let's see how we can actually output something to the console. So if we want to output text to the console, we can simply uh, write console.log and in parentheses, we can add the text which we want the uh, console to display. So we're just gonna write hello and we're gonna end this with a semicolon. And on the right hand side, we need to execute this file. So we're gonna write node, and then we need to write the name of the file, which is in my case, js underscore basics.js. And you'll see that nothing happens because I have not saved the file yet. Now in VS Code, you can see that you've not saved a file. If there's this white dot over here, uh, where my cursor is. So I'm gonna press Control S, save the file, and now if I go ahead and run this again, you'll see that it actually goes ahead and displays what we want it to display, which is hello. Next, variables. To declare a variable, you need to use the keyword var for variable and give your variable a name, such as new variable. And to assign a value to your new variable, you can simply um, write the name of the new variable and then add a value to it by using the equal sign. And we now have a new variable which has the value of five. And since we've learned how to output things in the console, we can go ahead and output um, this variable uh, value which is uh, simply done by console log and then new variable. And we can go ahead and execute the code after we save it. And you'll see that we have the five, which is the value we've assigned to the new variable. Now, there's a simpler way to do this if you want to have the declaration and the assignment of the value in one single line, you can simply skip this and put this on top and this will also work just fine. So let's save it and you'll see that this will also give me the value of five. When we assign a value to a variable, we don't necessarily need it to be a number such as in this example. We can also have other data types, for example, a string. So let's say we have some words over here such as hello world. And if we go ahead and save this and then uh, execute it, we can see that hello world is displayed. To give you another example of another data type, we could also assign a Boolean value, which is either true or false to our new variable. So let's go ahead and assign false. And then if we save this again and run it again, you'll see that we get false in our terminal output. Now that we know how to declare a variable and assign a value to it, it would help to know how we can go about changing the value 
of a variable by using different operations. So let's go ahead and make a variable a and give it the value one. And we'll give a second variable called b the value three. One operation that we can use is the sum operation, which simply uh, sums the value of a and b, which is of course uh, denoted by a plus sign. So let's go ahead and add a and b, and we're gonna console log this um, by displaying the value of our variable c. So let's save this and we are going to run this. You'll see that the uh, sum of A and B gets displayed on our console. The next thing we can do, we can also look at other operations such as the minus sign, which um, calculates the difference. Let's go ahead and save this again and run it. You'll see we get the difference between the two variables A and B and the uh, multiplication, division, um, or work analogously. Let me give you one final example with multiplication. So if we multiply A and B, we should get three, and that is exactly what we get. One thing that I do want to emphasize is that there are operations that don't necessarily require numbers. For example, if we want to concatenate strings. Let's, for example, assign the value hello to variable a and we'll assign the value world to variable b and we can concatenate these two strings by um, creating the variable c which is the sum of a and b so if we save this and run this uh, hold on and run this you'll see that we have a concatenated string of the two variables a and b there is one final thing that I want to show you concerning the basic operations in JavaScript, and that is a thing called assignment operators. Assignment operators allow us to shorten our code. So let's take an easy example. We're going to have a variable a and we're going to assign a value of one to it. Now, if we want to increment the value of a by one, we can do this by simply writing a equals a plus one. And you'll see that if we go ahead and console log the value of a, we will get the value of two. Uh, hold on, there, you'll see that we have two in the console output. Now a shorter way of writing this line that I've highlighted over here is by simply writing a plus plus. I'll save it, execute it again, and you'll see we have exactly the same outcome as we did before. We can also decrement the value of a by writing minus minus. So if we go ahead and um, execute this, you'll see that we have decremented the value of a by one, so it has become zero. Now let's have a look at arrays. Arrays become helpful whenever we need to store a large amount of items that are similar. So if we want to declare a new array, we have to write var, and then we're going to call my array um, our new array. And to declare the array, we need to use the keyword new and then array. And in parentheses, we have to write how many items we want to store. So we've declared the array. Now we can go ahead and assign the values to the array by simply writing my array and then we give it the index and then passing in the value so this we're just going to start store some names so the first one is going to be greg and uh, hold on the next one is going to be max and the third one is going to be peter and we also have to adjust the index accordingly so we need to have uh, three items in total. We start with an index of zero, so we have to change this index to one, this index to two, and we filled the array up. If we want to print a value from the array, we can go ahead and console.log and then my array and put in the index of the value that we want to um, print. So let's go ahead and run this and you'll see that we have printed Greg 
in the terminal, which is exactly the item which is stored in the array at the index zero over here. Now there are simpler ways of um, creating an array. If you want to um, avoid writing an array this way, you can also directly pass in the values into the parentheses over here. So let's just quickly change that. So let's add Greg, Max, and Peter within the parentheses, and we can delete this. And you'll see that the result is going to remain exactly the same as it has before. Now, we don't necessarily need to output the value stored in the um, index zero. We can also go ahead and change this index, and you'll see that the uh, terminal will now output max because we're referring to the first item, which is max over here. Don't get confused. When I say the first item is max, uh, that means that the item stored at index one is max because the arrays always start with an index of zero. So let's go back to index zero and you'll see that will be our item Greg at index zero. But it's possible to make this even simpler by using square brackets. If we use square brackets, we don't need to write new array. We can simply um, delete this and put square brackets around our items. And now we've also created the array. So you'll see that if I run this after saving it, we still get Greg as an output because we are printing the array value at index zero. If we now go ahead and output Peter once, so that would be the um, item at index two, we save this, we run it, and we get Peter as our output. So these are the three ways of creating your arrays where this is the shortest one. Now let's go ahead and talk about functions. Functions are very useful whenever we want to execute a block of code over and over again without having to write the code over and over again. So to create a function, we use the keyword function and then we have to give our function a name. Now we're gonna call the function greet because it is going to display a greeting message and it's gonna take one argument. Uh, the arguments are always inserted in parentheses after the name of the function. The code block that the function uh, executes is always written within curly brackets. So this function will simply log within the console uh, the word hello and then the name of the person that we input. All right, so this is our function finished. So if we go ahead and save this and run this, you will see that no nothing happens. That is because we still need to call the function before it is executed. So we're gonna call the function and give an argument into the function. There we go. Now if we go ahead and save this and run it, you'll see that it actually executes the code. It says, hello, Max. So if we want to have um, our program over here greet different people, we can create multiple calls. We can also go ahead and greet Peter, and we can also go ahead and greet Greg. So let's save this, and when we run it, you'll see that the code block within the function executes three times using each of these individual arguments. The next thing I want to talk about are for loops. For loops allow us to execute code for a certain number of times that we specify. Let's go ahead and create a simple for loop. We have to add a starting index. Then we have to decide within what range of the index the for loop should run. So we're gonna have four iterations, and then we also need to decide how the value i increments. We're gonna be incrementing it by one for every iteration. Then within the curly brackets, we can simply write the code that we want to execute. We're going to execute um, code that is very simple. We're simply uh, running, um, uh, we're simply going to output hello uh, every time. Now, if we go ahead and run this, you'll see that the code is executed exactly four times as we would expect it to by this for loop. 
At the very beginning, I mentioned that JavaScript is a client-side language which is executed within the browser. So instead of executing the code within our terminal, as we have done throughout, we are going to execute a simple line of code within our browser. Let's go ahead and write document.write, and in parentheses, we're going to write hello. Now let's try and execute this within our browser. To do that, we can simply go ahead on and click on run and then run without debugging. And as you can see here, I have a browser window. And in my case, this is a Chrome browser window. And over here, you can see that it has within the browser written the word hello. All right, so that's going to be it for the basics of JavaScript. If this video has helped you out, make sure to give it a like. And if you want to help me out, give this video a comment and um, subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.